Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Today's project is this old trestle table. Backstory on this is I was at a yard sale, guy had it for sale for 20 bucks, I offered him 15, he took it. Why would I buy it? It's got a painted top, it's got circular marks on the top, chip paint. Well, I could tell it was a nice table when I bought it, and it wasn't until I got it home and flipped it over I saw that it in fact was a Cushman. Cushman made a lot of high-quality furniture, particularly uh, famous for their colonial-style uh, maple stuff, uh, red, you know, the reddish-orange maple stuff. I have a, uh, a, a Cushman uh, hutch in my office that I uh, restored uh, a couple of years ago. It's gorgeous. I estimate this is a piece probably, probably from the 50s. It's that colonial revival style with the, the scallops along the edges. It, it's not a big piece. It's about four and a half in, four and a half feet long by 32 inches wide. It sits on a nice trestle base. It's 29 inches tall. Standard table height is 30, but some of the older stuff was a little shorter, 29 or 28 and a half. This would be a real nice uh, table for somebody's office, or what I'll probably do with it is advertise it as a small kitchen table. The, uh, the legs are in really, really good shape. It's Mark Cushman underneath. The issue on this table is it has been, the top has been painted twice. Once with a salmon color and then once with brown. It was painted with a brush. You can see the brush marks in it. Whenever you buy a piece of furniture, particularly a table where the top has been painted, you have to suspect that there's significant damage under the paint either stains or cigarette burns or something that the people couldn't deal with. I doubt she would have just painted the top of this table and left the legs the way they were. Most times when women paint furniture to make it look nice, they're painting the whole thing. So we'll find out. That's the big question uh, today. We're going to get this top stripped off and see what's underneath it. Now, if this type table is savable, I'm going to tone it a little bit with some cherry color. And then I have four solid, solid cherry armchairs that I bought, believe it or not, at Goodwill for $7.50 a piece that I've already cleaned up. And they will make a nice little set for somebody. So stick with us. We're going to strip this off, see what kind of damage we're facing. And if it's worth restoring, that's what we're going to do. We'll be right back. And here we go again. Methylene chloride stripper chip brush and my little plastic shovel from Walmart. Let's see what's under this god-awful paint. Wow, this actually looks like it may be cherry. Uh, obviously, here's one of the stains that I was uh, suggesting probably existed. But this is, there's an awful lot of grain here for maple, and I think this may be cherry. Look at the pins. This is going to be a beautiful table. Well, listen, I'm going to uh, get this all stripped off. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, it's all stripped off. It's in surprisingly good shape. It's an absolutely beautiful table. Uh, one of the things I like most about it is the proportions. Look how thin it is. I just think it makes it look very, very light and airy. Anyways, as we suspect, the top is, is stained. It's not damaged. There's no putty fills or anything like that. But what we have is this kind of stuff here. And you know, what this is from is from them using the table with broken finish on it. This is exactly the kind of pattern you see when finish breaks and then water and air and all sorts of gunk gets in there. And you wind up with these kinds of stains, which is why it's so important to refinish this furniture when it starts to go. We've got the table all sanded, and uh, those water stains, they lightened up a little bit, but they're not going to come out with sanding. So let's mix up some oxalic acid. We use this quite a bit on the channel. Anybody that follows the channel is familiar with it. But it's basically just uh, wood bleach. Sold as uh, wood bleach in the box stores. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper to buy it as oxalic acid. I get mine on Amazon. I think I got a five pound bag for, I don't know, 15 bucks, something like that. I can't remember. So I <coughs> heat up the water. And then I mix in as much oxalic powder as the water will take. And I know that when there's crystals that won't dissolve. And that gives me the strongest solution for that temperature.
think we're starting to get there. And here's the tabletop all sanded off. And with it sanded off, it, it very well may be maple. Uh, there's a lot more grain than I'm normally used to seeing on the maple, but I'm not seeing the color variations that you would normally see in cherry. So, jury's out. I mean, this, this board here is darker. This board looks more cherry than it does maple, but these boards over here look maple, so I just don't know. And, okay, so there's our stain, and we just lay this on, soak it right in, and let it dry. Now you can put extra on the stained areas. And lots of times the areas that have been water stained over a period of time, the grain will have opened up and it will just suck the water right in. So there's nothing wrong with going back over and soaking them right down. Yeah, it's Alex on. There's the worst of the stains. This circular one here, this here from the broken finish. And there's one in that corner there. Let's see what happens. Now the oxalic is dried, you can see the dried crystals all over the table. Let's get it rinsed off and see what it looks like. We had some lightning. This table is still wet. I rinsed it off. Some lightning of the stain, but the stains are still there. So I'm going to put a second coat of oxalic on this, let it dry, rinse it back off, and see how we're doing. Okay, the second coat's dried. Let's get it rinsed off and see how we did. Well, as before, it's it's lightened up, but it's not gone. Now the table is wet, so it'll fade when it dries, but you know you always have to worry about it popping back when it gets some finish put on it. Since this is not a veneered top, it's solid, and we're having some lightning with each successive coat. I'm going to put a third and final coat on here. Well, after the third coat of oxalic, it's lighter, but it's it's really still very much there. Yeah, I pulled it inside. It's starting to cloud up outdoors. We're going to have to let this dry out really thoroughly before we do any kind of uh, lacquer work on it. And this is what we've got left of the of the big stain. You can see it's a lot lighter than it was, but it's it's still there and it's still going to show. Uh, I think we're going to be able to conceal this under some color. It's faint enough and uh, you can see that the circular one here, we've lost this part of the tail, but we still have this. So we're going to have to do some color work, but the first thing we're going to have to do is seal it. We can't seal it until it's absolutely bone dry, otherwise, otherwise it will just cloud up. So that's going to be it for the first day. I mean, we don't have a lot of time into this thing, maybe just a couple hours, but uh, a lot of dry times. Three coats of oxalic, a coat of stripper. This thing has been wet for a very long time, so we're just going to leave it overnight, and we'll get back on it tomorrow. And that's when we'll pick the video up, so we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. It's the next day, and we're back at it. I got an early start this morning, as I often do. I flip the table up on its top, and because the wood is bare, it's on a, uh, a clean mover's pad and I cleaned light sanded and cleaned again the legs and the trestle assembly because we're going to have to change the color of the legs to match the chairs that we're going to put with them these this is one of the four matching chairs that will go with these and you can see here this is cherry this is the the light and dark that I was talking about that you often see in cherry but it's basically just a little bit redder and a little bit browner than kind of the orange color we have here. So I thought rather than shooting color on that, if I was to put a burnt umber glaze on the legs, I think that would get us where we need to be. So I'm going to apply glaze to the legs of this table right now and I'll bring you back when she's all covered. Those of you that haven't seen how I glaze, I just dip it into the glaze, I apply it with a foam brush and then using a chip brush and a rag, a dry brush and a rag. I'll dry brush it, wipe this brush off on the rag, dry brush it some more until I get it the way I want. Always with the grain and we'll see how we do. I'll bring you back. I've got the legs done and after I applied the the glaze I just brushed it out with a dry chip brush like I told you. Did the legs and the trestle. Because the table's upside down, the part that's going to show is under here, so take the time to crawl under there and look and make sure you're happy with it. See right there, we want to get that grain in the right direction of the glaze, and there we go. 
So if you see that color compared to that color, you can see how much we were able to change just with the application of the glaze. And that color is almost dead nuts on for this one. So I'm real happy uh, where we are with this. So I'm going to get the aprons done and then we'll flip this table over and we'll get a coat of sealer on the top and once the top is all sealed up we'll start working on color matching the top to the rest of the set. The table's been sanded to 150. Shoot a coat of sealer on it. First coat of sealer is on. Second sealer coat is on the top and it's dried. We're going to leave the top for a minute, flip the table upside down, and get lacquer on the legs. If you think about it, if we were to continue with the top, glazing and lacquering the top, it would be probably two days where I could get to those legs because I don't like to flip and uh, lay a piece upside down with fresh lacquer on it. So this is just kind of a little detour to keep this moving as expediently as we can. And there's absolutely no way I could shoot a good coat of lacquer on this leg assembly if it was standing on the legs. I'd be crawling around on my hands and knees. And the leg assembly, the aprons, and the underside of the table have all received a coat of lacquer sealing in the glaze. We'll give that just a little while to harden up. We'll flip this table up on its legs and get to work coloring and top coating the top. Moving right along now. The leg assemblies are all dry. The second coat of uh, sealer has been rubbed down with 4 aught steel wool. Well, let's put some glaze on it and see how it looks. I'm going to move this inside. It's drying way too fast. We've got the first coat of color on the top, and remember the top's always going to be lighter than the, than the rest. We're not there yet, but that's as much glaze as I want to put on in this first coat. And here's where we are after the first coat of glaze on the table. And the tones are there. This tone is getting very close to that one. So we're, we're really pretty close. We just need to darken up the top a little bit. But that can't happen until we seal in this uh, first coat of glaze. So there's the color match that we've got. Basically what I did is I shot a lacquer coat over our glaze coat. And then I came back with some toner. I mixed burnt umber dye stain with some lacquer thinner and a little bit of lacquer for some bite as you've seen me do, do before. Sprayed that on until I was happy with the color. And there we go. So I think we're right where we want to be. I don't think I want to go too much darker with the, the tabletop. I think it looks good. And we've got enough color on there that those stains, although if you look for them, you can find them. They just look like they're grain right now. And, uh, and that's, that's good. Well, I'm real happy with the way this turned out. And I think for the purposes of this video, we're about done. So from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care. We'll see you next video. And remember, it's just wood. Color and some shiny stuff. Bye.